All right, welcome to part two of our how to repair a MacBook Pro and how to upgrade it. In the previous part, we have replaced the battery. In this part, and this is the final part, we're going to replace the solid state drive. So what we have to do is pull out the screws using an appropriate screwdriver. Most of the kits that you buy will at least give you the option of having the screwdriver ship with them. You can see that's where this one came from. Now, just to be clear, there's been no promotional fee paid by, who is this, Indmem or anyone else. This is just us having to repair this uh, laptop and how to get it uh, back up to uh, as well, as good as it can be, how to upgrade it. All right, so we'll, uh, source th we sourced this drive off of Amazon and you can see it is a SATA type drive. I believe this is what they call a 13.7. And the reason it's called a 13.7 is because there's 13 connection points there and seven there. And that is what is required for this particular generation of MacBook Pro. If you have a different generation, you may have a different drive. So you need to make sure you're getting it for your device. This is an A1398. All right, so we've already got the screws out of this to make this faster. So let's get to it. That is your solid state drive. And all you need to do is pull a one screw out, which isn't very difficult. Magnetic tip, magnetic tip screwdrivers do help. This one is, but it's very weak. But it was included in the kit, so I'll tolerate it. There we go. And then this will just pry up and a little bit, not much, just a little bit, and you slide it out. And there you go. And let's just compare to make sure these are the same drives, same connectors, and bingo, they are. And we will put the new one in. Just slides in like that. Screw down screw it back in. Not quite straight. There we go. That's better. Make sure it's tight. Uh, then take your back cover, put it on, put your screws in. I'm going to skip that step for the sake of time here. Then turn it around. There are three ways to get the operating system onto your drive. One is to restore from backup using Apple Time Machine, which you'll see in a minute. The second is to use the internet recovery, which downloads a copy of the operating system, either that your machine shipped with or that is most current for it. And this is the preferred way. However, in our case, this didn't work. And the reason is apparently OS X Lion now has a known issue and errors out when you try to install it on a new machine through internet recovery. And the most current version of an Apple operating system that works on this machine is Catalina. However, this machine did not have Catalina on it, so you can't use the key combination to restore that version either. So we're going to show you a third way to get an operating system on your Mac with a new hard drive storage, and that is to download the version you want, in my case, Catalina, and put it onto a USB stick and make it bootable. We'll show you that in a few minutes after we go through and fail on the internet recovery. All right, so now we want to load OS X. So we press the command key and R. If you have an external keyboard in like Windows keyboard, it's the, which I do, I'm using the Windows key and R that gets us into the recovery system and we'll have to connect to my Wi-Fi or in your case, your Wi-Fi. And there we go. All right, so I'm going with English. Now you're naturally gonna to want to use Time Machine or just install OS X, but because this is a new drive, you need to put a partition on it. So instead of choosing the first two, go straight to Disk Utility. All right, now if this was a drive that we had something on, we would uh, select the, uh, the new drive and select Erase. But in our case, we're going straight to partition. So let's set uh, partition one and we'll call this, well, we'll call it whatever we want. So I'm just gonna call it Mac. Makes sense to me. And we do wanna use the entire size, uh, which is one uh, terabyte. And you do wanna use the Mac OS extended, journaled. Uh, you can make it case sensitive, but I wouldn't. Just leave it at the default there. Click apply and you'll see yeah, just go. 
You'll see down the bottom here in a minute. There it is. So that created a partition and it formatted it for us so we can get rid of that. We don't need the disk utility anymore. And now we can go to Restore from Time Machine or we can reinstall for uh, OS X. This is what we're going to select. If we wanted to skip straight to the latest build, we could just download it on a USB stick and boot off of that. But this is the easiest way to get your machine back running. So we wanted to show that to you. All right, so let's agree. And it will select the disk in a second here. There we go. That's available, select install. And we're stuck with can't download the additional components needed to install Mac OS X. Now you can try to redo this over and over again and it'll just keep erroring out. There are several workarounds for this, but the easiest is to just download the most current version of OS X that's available for your machine, which we're putting up on the screen here. Put it onto a USB stick, make it bootable, and boot off of that, then do your install. Catalina is the newest Mac OS we can install on our MacBook Pro A1398 from mid-2012. Our issue is that we don't have another Mac to do the download from, and the only way you can download it from the store is if you're on a Mac. So we have to pull it down from another source, then put it onto a USB stick and make it bootable on our Windows 11 computer. Here we go. So there are three things you need to get right here. First, you need to get the right version that'll work on your piece of hardware. Again, in my case, that's Catalina. Secondly, you've got to find a source for a DMG file. Get a DMG, not an ISO. And thirdly, it has to be a relatively current download because they time out. There's a story behind that with certificates that we're not going to get into to avoid the complexity. So what you need to do is just go Google it. Download Mac OS, in my case, Catalina DMG. And I found, in my case, the UUbyte site had a number of downloads and most of these worked fine. One of them, however, was old, and even though it was the same 10.15.5, it had expired and I couldn't use it. And if you have an older version, you'll know it because you'll grind up through your install and it will come up with this error message. This copy of the install of Mac OS Catalina application is damaged and can't be used to install Mac OS. Long story short, get a different one. If you're really stuck, you can apparently order these off Amazon for $15, $20. Somebody will send you a USB stick or go find somebody with a Mac and just download it straight from the Apple store. Okay, so let's choose this one for fun. Note the password on this download is GeekRar. We're going to, we already have this down, but I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Now this will download, it'll zip the file, it'll download it. You unzip it. When you're asked for the password, the password again is, in this case, GeekRar according to this, and that is what it was for me, and this worked just fine. So you download it, then you end up with your DMG file. Let's show you that. So once again, I have already downloaded this, and I have unzipped the file. And what we end up with when we unzip it is this. Just as, just, it doesn't make any difference at all what the file name is called, as long as it ends with DMG, and it's about eight and a half gig. Now, how do you get it onto a USB stick from Windows, and how do you make that bootable? Well, it's far from obvious, but it's not very hard. So let's show that to you too. There are several tools that will do the job. The ones we like are Etcher and Transmac. Transmac, I should say. So just Google Transmac and from Acute Systems and you can download it. Now you see it's buy now. Now it's good for 15 days without buying it. So download it, just click on the link and the other is Etcher and that's from Bellina. So click on that. And this is completely free. So right here, you select your version. In my case, it's Windows 64-bit. Click on that and download it. Transmac, we have to unzip. So the easiest way to do that is to use your right mouse button, drag it and extract, and it'll extract it right there. You just agree. There it is, run the setup, click next. And I'm gonna stop there because I already have it. And our friend Etcher is similar. Just double click on it. Agree with the install and it will install. I already have it, as I said, so this is kind of pointless. I'm going to skip through this now. So what we need to do is pop a USB stick in the computer. It needs to be at least 16 gig. Pop it in. It doesn't make any difference if it pops up. Just close it. However, there is something you need to do that's not obvious. So right click on your start button and select 
Well, in Windows 11, it's Windows Terminal. In Windows 10, it could be Command or it could be PowerShell, but you want to run the admin version of it. What you want to type in here is disk part. List disk, select, in my case, disk one, because that you can see plainly is my USB disk, it's 14 gig. And you'll notice right here that it doesn't say it's GPT and it needs to be GPT. I'm not gonna get into the details of master boot record versus GPT, but the partition table makes a difference and Mac wants GPT. So easy enough to do. First thing you do is wipe anything off that USB stick by using the clean command. There's no coming back from this, by the way. Once you've cleaned that drive, it's gone. There's, everything's wiped off of it, including the partitions. So at this point, you need to type in convert GPT and it will immediately do it. And then type list disk again. And you'll notice that now it is a GPT disk. And we're done with Windows Terminal, so we can just type exit. Okay, Etcher came up, so let's use Etcher. Flash from file, click on Etcher. Click on flash from file. Select your, whichever DMG you want. I'm going to use that one. This error message comes up telling you it's not bootable. That's okay. Click continue. And then just click, click flash. And that will take, I don't know, 10 minutes to complete, something like that. Let's get out of that. Well, let's bring up the other tool that you may want to use, TransMac. And I'm only explaining this in case you have troubles with one. You can use the other. You do not have to do both. Okay, so let's click run. You can see I have 12 days left in my eval. If you're using TransMac, right click on the USB stick, select format for Mac, select yes, because this needs to be run as an administrator, which makes sense. And just do that again, right click and select format for Mac. You can, it doesn't make a difference what you call it. I'm just going to leave it. This is going to take a minute, so I'll skip through it so you don't have to wait. Format complete, lovely. Now right click on the, on the disk and select restore with disk image. And it says this is going to toast the USB stick. That's just fine. Select the file, click the three dot ellipsis at the end and go find your DMG file. You can use that one and click OK. And it says, hey, this is not a compressed DMG. It's just going to write it as a raw image. That's great. Click OK. This is going to take a while, so just let it sit. Okay, so you take your USB stick with your Mac OS, formerly OS X on it, plug it into the side. And this is important. Um, make sure you've got the uh, power plugged in. you got it plugged into the wall. Uh, and that gets to another good point, which is if this is really slow, what we're about to do, What's probably happening is your battery sucks. Your battery is old and it's not taking the charge properly. And as such, the Mac will slow all of its processes down. So I did this once already on a machine with a dead battery and it took about 15 hours. Not kidding. It was painfully slow. All right, so press the Alt or Option key and just hold it down and then press the power like I just did and keep holding the option key. This will give you the option to boot off of different devices, including, there we go. Instead of your Mac, your hard drive that's already in there, you could boot off the network, which we've already shown you earlier in the video, or your USB stick. So guess what one we, we select? Select, in my case, Catalina. I'll speed through this so you don't have to wait. There we go. Now, if you haven't already prepped your disk, which we showed you how to do earlier, go to Disk Utility and you put a new partition on it. But we've already done that at the start of this video, so we're not going to have to. And now we can just select Install Mac OS. Now here's something interesting. When we were do trying to do it through the recovery method, it said Install or Upgrade Lion. And this doesn't, this says Mac OS. So let's click on that and click continue. Click continue. Oh, I read that very carefully and it's gonna pop up and make sure I did. There we go. So you can't sue them. Which drive do you wanna put it on? Now at this point, I'm gonna stop because I've already done this machine. But you'll want to put it on your internal hard drive. In my case, it's labeled Apple, but it could be anything. And then click install.
Okay, once you've gone through the setup wizard, you'll be taken into Catalina, in my case, Catalina, and you'll get this lovely little tour option in the top right hand corner. It will show up in a minute or two if it hasn't shown up already. And it's very important that you check for updates right away. So click on the Apple, click System Preferences, and go to Software Update. In my case, I've already patched it from 10.15.5 to 10.15.7. Click Advanced and you can see what the options are. And that is how you replace a solid state drive and install a brand new fresh Mac OS operating system, either from recovery or from a USB stick made on Windows 10. And hey, we'd really appreciate it if you would uh, give us a thumbs up uh, and even a subscribe. They're both really helpful with the Google algorithms. If you have a question or comment, put it in the comment section below. We'll uh, get back to you or somebody else will. And you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. That's urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.